Have you ever wondered how to decode the markings on a measuring tape? In this video, we are covering a crucial skill, how to accurately read a measuring tape. This might seem basic, but getting precise measurements is the key for any project, whether big or small. We will be covering both metric and imperial scales. Now let's get started. First of all, let's look at the length of the tape measure. This will usually be printed on the measuring tapes label. For pocket measuring tapes, common lengths are 3 meter, 5 meter, 7.5 meter and 10 meter. Here I am using a freeman's 5 meter tape, which is a typical size for construction projects. The tape width is important for stability during measurements. This tape is 25 mm wide, providing more durability and making it easier to read while preventing it from bending too much when extended. Now let's look at the scales. The bottom half shows the metric scale with measurements in centimeters and millimeters. The top half has an imperial scale for inches. The measurements start from the zero point marked right at the edge of the hook. You might notice that the hook at the end of your tape measure feels slightly loose. This movement is intentional and compensates for the thickness of hook. This design ensures accurate measurements, whether you are pressing the tape against a surface or hooking it onto an edge. When measuring against a surface, press the tape forward. When measuring from an edge, pull the tape slightly outward. For extra accuracy, you can start measuring from the one inch mark a technique known as burning an inch. Just remember to subtract one inch from your final reading. Now on the imperial scale, we have inches. Each large number represents a whole inch while the shorter lines in between are fractional markings. Each inch is broken into fractions. Let's take a closer look at the first section of the tape measure. The distance between the zero and one inch marks represent one inch. Starting from the zero mark, there are 32 divisions in a freeman's scale, but we only consider the 16 divisions. As in construction, we rarely require such fine precisions. Each of these 16 smaller marks represent one sixteenth of an inch, progressing up to one inch. The first line after zero is one sixteenth of an inch. The second is two sixteenths and so on until 16 sixteenths which equals to 1 inch. This mark corresponds to 2 sixteenths of an inch, but this fraction can be simplified. Dividing both numerator and denominator by 2 gives 1 eighth of an inch. Similarly, we can simplify other fractions. 4 sixteenths become 2 eighths, 6 sixteenths become 3 eighths, and so on. In India, we call these eighth divisions as suits. For instance, one inch is equal to eight suits. Some fractions can be reduced even further. For instance, dividing both two and eight in two eights by two simplifies it to one fourth of an inch, which is commonly known as quarter inch. In the same way, six by eight simplifies to three by four, also known as three quarters of an inch. Four by eight simplifies to half an inch and 8 by 8 equals to 1 inch. As these fractions are reduced, additional labeling is not necessary. Observing the tape measure, you will notice a pattern in the lengths of the marks. The 1 16th inch marks are the shortest, the 1 8th inch marks are slightly longer, followed by the 1 4th inch marks. The half inch mark is still longer, and the longest marks indicate full inches. Learning to identify these marks quickly will make measurements easier. For example, to find 9 sixteenths, recognize that the shortest marks represent sixteenths. Count these using odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on until you reach 9 sixteenths. The same method works for 1 eighth inch and 1 fourth inch marks. Another approach is to use the spacing between marks. Every two marks represent one eighth inch 
every four marks represent one fourth inch and every eight marks represent half inch. To locate five eighths, count five one eighth inch intervals. This method is also useful for adding and subtracting measurements. For example, to add three eighths and one eighths, count three additional one eighth inch intervals, totaling half inch. When adding fractions with the same denominator, simply add the numerators. For instance, 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 equals to 4 by 8, which simplifies to half an inch. When the fractions have different denominators, you can convert them to a common denominator first. For example, to add 1 by 8 and 3 by 16, multiply 1 by 8 by 2 by 2 to get 2 by 16, then add 2 by 16 and 3 by 16 to get 5 by 16. Now, on a metric scale, each large number represents a full centimeter. If you need to measure 10 centimeters, just count to the 10th mark. Each centimeter is divided into 10 millimeters, so every small mark represents 1 millimeter. Knowing these divisions is crucial for engineering and construction measurements. To take a measurement, first find the nearest whole unit. Then, if it extends past this point, check the closest fractional or millimeter marking. For example, this board measures 10 inches or 25.4 centimeters. For more accuracy, make sure the tape is held straight and tight. Freeman's tapes include speciality markings like the 16 inch stud mark. This marking is useful in carpentry and construction for stud placement in walls. It's also helpful to remember a few key conversions. These conversions are very handy, especially if you are working on projects where you switch between metric and imperial measurements. And that's it. Now you know how to read both metric and imperial measurements on a measuring tape. Understanding these basics will help you to get accurate measurements and avoid costly errors on any project. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more construction tips. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.